Welcome to episode 66 of Cyclops is Waiting for Me, an X-Men the Animated Series weekly recap podcast. I'm JC, and, and we are getting so, so close to the end now. And I'm Rod. I agree. We're getting close to the end. <laughs> I don't know how to follow. I'm a bad yes and person. And today we're <laughs> doing our first ever remote guest with Michelle Waffle. Michelle, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're on this podcast. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for reaching out and for making this happen. Despite our technical difficulties, we are we're here now. <laughs> yeah, probably the least of our technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, I was like so nervous. I'm normally pretty professional, and I was about to lose my cool. I don't know if you can cuss on this podcast. Oh, we definitely so. swear. Don't oh, worry. okay. Well, I was yeah. gonna lose my shit. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, I have an ancient computer. None of my headsets work except the janky one. And then husband came through with his work headset and don't so worry rod's computer almost blew up during the proteus episode so you're fine yeah oh I, my battery swelled and then it just stopped recording that was fun no. i feel like that's a little appropriate for proteus, <laughs> right, right? <laughs> it was him yeah and just so our audience knows we actually met each other at san diego comic-con because you were with the voice of rogue oh my gosh i Okay, so San Diego Comic Con was kind of a blur for me. There was a lot going on. It was, I think I went too hard on preview night. For some reason, I just thought, you know, like, I've never been to preview night, and I thought I had to go hard. And then towards the end, I'm like, I'm exhausted. I feel like I just went to like a four day con. If it makes you feel any better, it was my second year working Comic Con, and I was writing for a buddy's website called The Flickcast. And I had an interview with the lead singer of Coheed and Cambria at 9 a.m. And it was literally the worst idea ever because we were both, well, I was definitely still drunk. And I don't know if he had not gone to sleep, if he was hungover, whatever his scenario was. But I literally like trailed off in the middle of the conversation. (laughs) And he's like, that kind of night? I'm like, yeah. (laughs) So (laughs) You guys could have just taken a nap together. It would, would have been a fantastic one, especially because that was 2010. So nothing was on video. So it would have just been like really awkward audio of people like sleeping. So Yeah. Maybe like <laughs> ASMR. A- yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the closest I've come to something like that is after my second COVID vaccine, I had to interview a famous person for my YouTube channel. I won't call them out specifically. And maybe this would be a call to action. Go check it out if you want to figure out which one it was. I was dying <laughs> on camera, like literally, because I I always have like a you know four days I'm just dead after that. Yeah. But I had to drive out to the west side, interview this person in public, and film it. And I was just there, like, oh, how did it feel working? On? Oh my god! <laughs> I was thinking it was remote for you. Oh, you, you, you know, died you just out like a celebrity. It's yeah, fun, right? yeah. If you had to physically go there and interview somebody, like. <sighs> I feel your pain because those yeah. booster shots are no joke, man. Yeah, oh. I'm, I'm not one of those people that's like asymptomatic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm the opposite. I'm, I'm all the symptoms. Yeah. So you're also on a X-Men podcast, right? Power of X-Men? Yeah. I recently got upgraded to co-host. Because, nice. Yeah. I brought Congrats. on a wine sponsor. So <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got a promotion. So I met Paul from Power of X-Men, or Dayspring, as he likes to be known as, during COVID times. And he's like, I love your Archangel cosplay. And he's like, I do a podcast. And he invited me on to talk about Generation X, my favorite comic ever of all time. Yeah, and then he brought in Larry Houston, and I was like, I know Larry. Nice. (laughs) He's literally kind of like my neighbor, sort of. He lives (laughs) in the town next to me. I used to see him all the time at this comic shop I worked at. So we're kind of friends now. Very so, cool. Yeah. Rod does not read comics. The attention span, just not there for him. That's so if okay. You, so if you ever want to like throw in little tidbits from what you've learned in the comics, it's the probably the first time Rod has heard most of this. So. Oh, okay. If, okay. Like, oh, I have a very particular one that Rod's going to be like, really? As we go Great. through today's episode. Oh, so, okay. I have one? one too. I have one too. I wonder very if it's cool. the same one. It probably is. <laughs> I mean, I did mention Generation X, so... Yeah, it's the same one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will, as the guest, I will let you take it when we get there then. Okay, the, okay. The only Generation X thing I know is the Fox TV show that happened back in the 90s, I think. Mm-hmm. It was a made-for-TV movie. Yeah, I liked it. But... It was. It did not age well, because I raved about it to my husband. I was like, oh my god, I was so excited when it came out. I stayed up super late to watch it, because it was on at like 10 or something, and... I couldn't wait for the next episode, and then it never 
like it happened. You know, yeah, like there was just there was just radio silence on it. So I was telling him about it. I have a bootleg copy on nice. DVD. So that that's a lot of people's argument about when they say like, oh, stuff used to be better back then. It's like, no, we used to forget about it back then. It didn't live forever online. Yeah. Yeah. So like when a movie was bad or an episode of SNL was bad, we just forgot about it. But now people critique a bad episode of anything for eternity. Yeah. <laughs> but for the time, it was it was really good i thought yeah. and for the budget they had i mean the actors that played emma and sean i mean they were superb yeah i yeah. actually really liked emma frost on that yeah she was a baddie i like yeah <laughs> I, I i believed her as a professor you know yeah, yeah I, I believe that she had her like battle era and then she's mm-hmm. like listen i'm retiring and teaching now yeah, yeah I'm over, but i'm, I'm still gonna wear shit. the outfits <laughs> well i liked that they gave her like kind of functional outfits too i mean she was still like sexy but classy so cyclops is waiting for me it's a weekly <laughs> recap podcast series where we're going hey, wait is that a bad transition no no that was good you nailed it the only reason it's a bad transition is because you asked is this a bad transition <laughs> okay <laughs> king of, of segways every single out. episode we leave, of we all this shit in <laughs> X-Men the animated series and their original intended script order building up to the release of X-Men 97 coming to Disney Plus later this year which hopefully sooner than later because we are like two episodes well three two or three episodes away from like the end of this series well to date ourselves there was something that went up today from the people at X-Cast that Bo shared some information about what to expect from the upcoming series so nice. it, member of the creative team is is still talking about it as coming out i i tend to believe it some quick reminders we are recaps show about a series that came out over 30 years ago there are gonna be spoilers if you don't want it spoiled for you pause the podcast watch the episode come back we found out in a recent episode that our guest joe russo does not watch any of the episodes he literally just listens to our podcast and that's the weirdest thing to me but shout out to joe for that we will do a great way to experience it though right yeah, should, through, we, through we should, our eyes is just weird. <laughs> we should add, like, a podcast equivalent of Paper Towns. Are you familiar with Paper Towns? It's like how back in the day, people who made atlases could figure out if people were, like, plagiarizing their atlases. They would put, like, a town that didn't exist in real life, so it was called a paper town. So when oh, people wow. copied it. So we should just throw something to the episode that's not true, play it straight, and then just see later down, like, years from now, if Joe's like, remember that episode when X-Men? We're like, oh. that, Of all the things that Joe is going to talk about, that is yeah. not going to be it. Joe, like, remember the Joe- one where Wolverine died? Yeah. 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 Again? Yeah. <laughs> We are currently, nor will we probably ever be sponsored by Disney or Disney Plus in any way, shape, or form. That's our goal. We're, we're almost there. Watch this I get mean, sponsored for the very last episode. Never last say episode. never. <laughs> never say never, okay? You missed the episode where they were talking about Cyclops semen for about 25 minutes. <laughs> okay, great. maybe not that episode, but I'm not really a Cyclops fan. None of us are. Oh, it's kind of okay. The, kind of the whole okay. joke. Okay. Is, I, was, yeah, I was like... Yeah, yeah we... <laughs> We kind of beat on Slim a lot here, so. I mean, he's an okay guy, but I'm a Wolverine girl. You'll love the title of this podcast then because it's in reference to Wolverine against kind of Cyclops. It's a memeable moment where Gene turns away from Wolverine. It's like Cyclops is waiting for me. (laughs) And then sad Wolverine is so am I. (laughs) (laughs) It's like that picture from the animated series where like Gene and Scott are embracing and Cyclops. Yeah, Gene and Scott are embracing. Same episode. Yeah, yeah so that sad. that episode had three different moments that became memes. For some reason, that episode was the meme episode. That's the episode, you know. And it's then, like, of course, there's memeable. the rogues ass episode, which happened later. <laughs> I mean, uh, gosh, a booty like that, you can't ignore right. it. I mean, they knew what they were doing when they animated that. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Yeah, they did. <laughs> and it was it, John. You sent me the meme of someone super cut like all of Gene's drones along with all the <laughs> nope. rogue booty shots and stuff. <laughs> nope, that I did not. I don't know who sent you that. It wasn't me, though. Oh, send it to me. I want to hear it and see it. I need I need this in my life. <laughs> anyway, speaking of social media, don't forget to follow us. <laughs> Cyclops, IWFM Pod on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook. And, of course, make sure to follow us on all your favorite podcast services. Finally, we record these episodes. Actually, we're not recording this one in batches. This one uh, is this- not a batch. This is actually this is a- just recorded out of order, though. Yeah. If we're reacting to any news about the upcoming series, we'll be a few weeks behind. And also, if something happened in the last two episodes, we don't know yet. <laughs> yep. Now, I don't either. Um, <laughs> th- on to the show. We're going to be talking about Season 5, Episode 8, titled Hidden Agendas. It aired on September 13th of 1997 and is currently sitting at a 6.5 star rating on IMDb. When it came to actual airing order, this is the second to last episode as opposed to its 
script order of third to last episode. Ooh. So it was this and then the finale. Oh, man. That's kind of sad. So yeah. the finale. Hopping into the episode, it kicks off with the Umber Arthracite Mining Facility. I had to look up what Arthracite was. I did not know what that word was. What is that? It's coal. Yeah. It's just oh, really, oh, high, oh, really just high cool. quality coal. Oh. Right? Okay. I had look, when this opened up, I was like, is this a Captain Planet episode? Because I feel like every episode of Captain Planet opened up like a strip mine and then some like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like some kind of like pollution type thing. Happening. But also all the choices of vehicles that they had gave me the vibe of a Transformers episode. Yes. Like that, that one Decepticon that was everything combines and becomes like the big wrecker <laughs> or whatever the hell it was. Oh yeah. That's the one in the Michael Bay movies had the balls yes. as wrecking balls. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I was going to go with, like, the, the one that's, like, big and neon green and purple. But, yes, the one that has the balls. <laughs> the one with the balls works, too. Thank you for coming on the podcast, Michelle. <laughs> you can witness this in real time. Yeah. So, we see, they go into the mine, and there is a worker who causes a cave-in. And yeah, My note here was, inside, there's a bunch of white dudes that say gas with three syllables. <laughs> that fuck things up. No, where you're from, Rod, is that, like... Is that further drawl or less drawl? Like, because you. This is further because I'm, I'm yeah. in a. I say neutral part of India, but like, as far as like southern drawls go, like, it's not that deep. We do say okay. crick instead of creek. Right. But I, I don't know. There's, it's like probably split half and half between like older generations and younger if you say gas with one syllable or three or four. So this is Kentucky. So it's yeah, diff- diff- so. totally different draw. As this cave-in starts, one of the workers tries to save another, pushes him out of the way. The character that we find out to be Sam sees his paw get knocked over and under a beam and goes to help him. So I didn't recognize the name Sam Guthrie. I'm assuming that's really important. Yeah. It kind of is. Why is okay. this not the episode this, this we're using the video, video to record? Michelle's expression was perfect. You don't know the Guthries? Okay, no. listen. They are like mutant royalty. They're par- they're like up there with the Summers family. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mrs. Guthrie literally just pops out mutants. Like that <laughs> is her mutant power is to there make more are mutants. Nine Guthrie children. Yeah. Oh, wow. Nine Guthrie. So someone finally beat Mystique for mutant babies. Mystique has two. But she adopted Oh yeah. Birds. Yeah, so. So yeah. she's got three. I feel like there's more people out there. Like, there's more. Right. Well, I mean, in the context of the show. Oh, in the show. Cause, cause okay. There, cause there was a okay. whole, like, there was like four or five episodes that just, not just with Mystique, but a bunch of different mutants, but it was mostly Mystique with, like, secret babies. There was, like, oh, that's was true. a whole yeah. run of romance novels basically starring yeah. Mystique. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we'll come back to the Guthrie family. Okay, okay. okay. Yes. We'll come back but, to the yes. Guthries. I do have to point out, we've literally talked about this character in other episodes, Rod. Probably. So, Michelle, if you haven't listened to the other episodes, <laughs> I have the memory of a goldfish. So, I literally watched this 20 minutes before we started recording so that it could stay in my memory because tomorrow morning I'll. You're gone. like, how many Guthries are there? Right. <laughs> what? So, in early episodes, we've referenced that Cannonball is seen uh, on screen. Okay. Sam Guthrie is Cannonball. They changed the character design in this episode to be the not armored version of him. But he's oh. he's shown on screens and stuff like that in the past. It's okay. like his fourth appearance on the show, but it's the first one where he's actually named and has a speaking role. Okay, yeah, I, I knew Cannonball. I, yeah, I didn't recognize him from that. Yeah, it's normally probably because he's not blonde. Like, yeah, yeah he, they they animated him kind of almost like a human torch style power. Yeah, they gave him like a square head too. I was yeah. like, what is happening with gigantic longer. ears too? Yeah. Was, yeah. I'm like, no, he's supposed to be like a cute southern boy who's blonde. <laughs> Why are all of the blondes who are in the comics redheads on the show? Like right? Dazzler's a redhead. The Guthries have red hair. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he literally gets married to one of the Imperial Guard or something like that. Yeah, in the current- he, got, yeah. he got himself a boss bitch wife. Like... <laughs> yeah. He's a he's a stay at home dad basically now. For God, now, we really we, we really gotta know. get you caught up on the comics, Rod. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, so dad tells his son that he's gonna have to blast his way out of here, and as that happens, the gas lights up, and Sam grabs his dad, and one of the other guys in the mine flies out. And Rod, what was your understanding of the power at that point? Yeah, my note literally says he reveals himself to have fire powers. So, but if I'd known he was Cannonball, that would have made a lot more sense. I just didn't put that together. <laughs> so, the piece about Cannonball, and Michelle, correct me if I'm wrong about any of this, when he is charged up, nothing could hurt him as long as he is in motion. 
And I believe that power carries over to people he's holding as well at the time. That's why there was like the little glow around everybody as he was shooting through the wall. Because if he didn't have that, their skulls would have been crushed or, or on those rocks. <laughs> or they would have been like burned up by his like blast. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Let's just assume that's part of his power. I no. can't confirm or deny that. <laughs> that makes more sense than having fire powers, though, because working in a mine would possibly be the worst job possible for someone who's flammable. Yeah, I mean, Johnny Storm would not do well there. <laughs> even even Chamber, Chamber would just, like, say oh. something and just kill a bunch of people. Chamber. Yeah. By the way, you guys can't see it, but Michelle has a bunch of inbox action figures behind her. Do you have a cannonball on that wall behind you? Oh, you know what? I don't. I wanted to buy him because he was on clearance because I'm all about them deals. Right. And my husband told me no. He was like, why do we need him? So, <laughs> so they saved the best for the last episodes. <laughs> so, I don't, so I don't have I don't have a cannonball. Um, so I have the three pack with him. <laughs> I don't. So everybody gets saved outside and it cuts over to a little girl telling the story. That little girl was Paige Guthrie. Pa <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so Paige Guthrie, she is my favorite Generation X character of all time. Like, I love her. Okay, I mean, I went into Generation X liking Jubilee because like that was my introduction to the, the series. I started reading the books when Jubilee left the team to go be on Generation X. But I just loved Paige's like power, how she just like rips her skin off and she didn't know what it did. She was just so happy to be a mutant. Like that's all she ever wanted was just to be a mutant and to be an X-Men. And so when she found out that she could rip her skin off, She's like, yeah, I'm a mutant like my brother. As the story goes on, she learns that she can rip her skin off and she's different underneath. Like she doesn't have control, so it's whatever. Like she could be metal, she could be like dirt, she could be scales, she could be gas, like she could be all kinds of like random stuff. She just never knew what she was gonna be when she ripped her skin off. And um, it's wild. Yeah. Rod, for context, that character's code name is Husk, if that means anything to you. Yeah, it Husk was her but name. the name makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So her brother's Cannonball, and she's Husk. Okay. Yeah. And there's another Guthrie that comes and joins a team later. His name is Icarus, because he has wings. And that's not the Icarus that... I know from the Marvel stuff. It's right? not the Eternals. Okay. Correct. Icarus. I figured she was important because they dropped a lot of very specific names in this episode. And that's usually that, or if they animate someone very specifically, it's like, oh, they're important. So I just like yeah. bookmark it. Yeah. Maybe it was like a, ba oh, you know what? It could have been a backdoor pilot for a Generation X animated series that never came to fruition. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. We'll have to ask Larry, Larry or, ask or him Eric about it. next time we see them. Yeah, ask Larry, I think. Eric usually defaults to Larry. <laughs> yeah, just ask Larry. He knows everything. But then we get a moment that 30 years ago, I don't think I appreciated as much as I do now. They literally dropped the, well, you may be Superman line. And I literally was like, did Eternal steal that from this show? I mean, granted, comic books back then were, were different. And like you would actually get crossovers between the companies. It was just kind of shocking to me to hear Superman's name dropped in the X-Men cartoon. I didn't even catch that until you mentioned it. We talk about too, like, because it's always the generation previous that's writing the one for that generation. So that was just like, who's the universal superhero that I remember? Superman. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But his mom is, you know, wants him to get out into the world and stay out of the mines. And, you know, it's kind of like the, the old school generation of they want their kids to have a better life than what they did. So even the dad is like, you know, you need you need something something to look forward to. And at that point, Mr. Gerklin arrives and he also says that he wants more for Sam. As far as I knew, this was not a character that I had ever come across in in all my years of buying comics. <laughs> I made a note to ask you guys, who is Mr. Kirkland? Like, well, who is he really? <laughs> like... I, okay, so when I watch this, I'm going to be honest, I was multitasking because I'm con crunching right now, mm -hmm. but I was like, oh my gosh, is this like William Stryker? Like, is he back? Is he recruiting again? Like, what's he doing? It very much felt like a Stryker character. Yeah. Yeah. I thought maybe, because he even kind of looked like him too. Yeah. And, and as we go through the episode and it's like very much the clandestine military program and yeah, it, there's so much of it, it was a very Stryker-esque thing. Yeah. But nope. Just... 
a random dude who I I didn't find anything else about him. He, this is so. his one episode. And I I was even just looking like in the comics if he popped up he he didn't make Wikipedia entries. I'll say that. Ooh. So maybe that was just like a behind the scenes reference to somebody that knew someone or worked on the team. Or yeah, they're like name me after a character <laughs> right. or name a character after me. And yeah, they're like what was it? Ger- Gerklin? Kirkland. Yeah, Gerklin. Yeah, was it was with a, with a G, not a K. Oh. Well, Kirkland, Gerklin, about the same. Yeah. You could probably yeah. get them at so, Costco. So that's hilarious. The caption, the ca- yeah, the caption was wrong. Though. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the first time it's been wrong. No, there was one episode or a few episodes where they spelled the one like one name differently every time it appeared. Oh, the the dude who was trying to marry Storm. That they na- they they put his name like or his planet's name three different ways or something. They this do that. Basically, he was just like the stereotypical army recruiter at high school. I even wrote down like he had this line that I don't think ages very well, but is very of the time telling Sam that if you join me, this is what, what being a man is all about. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I literally put in quotes, man speech. Yeah, it's like <laughs> trusting a stranger. Because he didn't even, you know, minor spoiler, but he never elaborates on what this thing is. He doesn't. He's just like, come with me, boy. <laughs> right. And, and Sam's like, stranger danger. <laughs> as we go through the episode, too, we also find out Sam is only 16. So it's... Yeah. Like, I get if this this kid is 18 years old and he's still like, you know, what is it still wet in the nose or whatever that expression is? Like, you're still so young, you don't know. But he's he's also a minor and yeah, you're still trying minor. to recruit him. Yeah. So. Um, so 90s army recruitment. So. Yeah. <laughs> so as Gerklin leaves, you know, he, he pulls out the first flip phone that we see in a while on the show. And he says he needs more convincing and we need to take a less subtle approach. We jump over to the X mansion. And Rogue and Gambit are playing pool. And holy crap, the redesigns are present in these episodes. Is the Gambit voice different too? The Gambit voice was different. Okay, I was like, what? Yeah. Like, we made comments before that Gambit was like borderline offensively like accented. That that was fine. This is it. (laughs) Yeah. Going through previous on the making of an animated series, Eric actually refers to this animation team as the C team. We had known that there was a B team. <laughs> this was this was the third level one. So this was Saban saying you have $47 and a, you know, pack of bubble gun and coffee stirs to put this episode together. Yeah, that opening shot, there was like three things that moved in it. Maybe that's why we got Gerkland, who was probably <laughs> just like, they're like, let's just reanimate, let's trace over and reanimate him a little bit and he yeah. could be different. So obviously Rogue's design was dramatically different, especially her hair was yeah. super, super different. It was super uh, flat. Like she had yeah. a, like a blowout. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was like closer to Farrah Fawcett hair than anything we've seen in the show so far. And also the coloring on her hands, they drew the edge of her gloves as like a bracelet and her hands were bare and then they'd come back like a shot later and she had regular gloves on. I, was, yeah, I noticed that a few times yeah. that there was barehanded rogue just touching things and people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, or even later when she visits the house and she's like she's not wearing like sleeves or something. Of, yeah. Oh yeah. girl. <laughs> <laughs> what if somebody hugs you or touches you? Oh. So Gambit is being creepy Gambit and, and kind of doing the, oh, well, what happens if I win? And Beast comes in and Gambit scratches. And at that point, I think we were all just so bothered by Gambit's new voice acting that is just, <laughs> it was like, okay, cool. Let's hopefully not have a ton of Gambit in there. So Beast is pulling out the mail and some magazine has put Sam on the front page cover for using his mutant ability. And I was like, what magazine is turning around stuff that quickly? (laughs) Yeah, like small town news is making like headlines on a nationally public or published magazine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or like this was that universe's vampire boy with that. Uh, Weekly World News. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Does Gen Z actually know about that, Rod? You're friends with them because of TikTok. (laughs) I don't actually know. I think I think the equivalent now is like clickbait headlines, right? Probably. Oh god, Weekly World News was the original clickbait, basically. Yeah, they always yeah. publish weird stuff like alien babies and Bat Boy. Yeah. When I first got into like YouTube and social media stuff, you know, years and years ago, and everybody was like clickbait. Like our generation didn't have that. It's like, are you kidding? We all saw the grocery aisle, like the magazine rack at the grocery aisle. <laughs> it's still it's been around forever. It's still yeah. there. We just yeah. don't pick it up anymore. Yeah. <laughs> They have uh, a website now. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're on TikTok. Oh, that's an interesting idea for some Gen Zers is to start a TikTok <laughs> account that's basically just the equivalent of like a literal equivalent of like the grocery tabloid rack. Hey. Make it happen, Rod. Yeah, Not you me. might be onto something. <laughs> I'm too old to care about that. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody else who's hearing it though has like motivation doing yeah. it. So Rogue seeing this you know, especially having Southern heritage is like, you know, maybe I should head down there. It's a small town. They're probably suspicious of this kid with mutant powers and such. And Gambit, of course, offers to join. And she says, no, I could use a vacation from you. (laughs) Yeah, I can see why, girl. Did you get kind of cougary vibes from her, too, though? Because she was like, a boy like that could use a nice Southern girl. I didn't, but you and I read into stuff very differently. So I would, I would love your opinion, Michelle. Like, do you, where, where do you think that fell? I mean, I, I feel I got a little bit of the vibe, but it could just be like that Southern, you know, like hospitality. Like I care about things, you know, like Dolly Parton or something. You know, she's, she didn't mean it like that, but it could come off yeah. like that. Well, I, and I didn't think she had any intentions. I just, I think in her thought process, she was like, well, this teenage boy is going to be threatened by other people. But if, you know, a nice, pretty Southern gal comes, then he'll be receptive to the message, which is not wrong. It's not wrong. <laughs> I, maybe she was just stating it very factually. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. And we all just read too far into it. Yeah, so. this could be true. Which is accurate for our show. Flash down, and it, they are at the Cumberland General Store. And I was like, is that just like a Cumberland Farms reference? <laughs> and you have one guy who's talking about how they lost two horses. And this other random dude is like, yeah, are there, there are mutants near your farm? And it was like early misinformation just being spread. And I was like, oh, there are weird correlations to modern day that are still very applicable in this yeah. show right now. Yeah. Also, how do they get around so fast? It's crazy. Like, who are they yep. finding to spread this gossip? Well, the, I, I assume these are some of the agents, right? Yeah, I got Maybe. the impression that this this the guy who was talking about the are there mutant sneer, and then there's some kid who walks into a diner <laughs> and starts, you know, spreading like, oh, your girlfriend's banging the mutant rumors. I got the impression those were just literally plants from this government program. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, also, this is a thousand percent how small towns talk, just from somebody who grew up in a town of 3,000 people. They <laughs> all it? had mullets, too. Like, everybody had a mullet. <laughs> also true. They, like, they really went for the character design here. They're they like, did. no, we, there we like know these There was like a blonde mullet, a brown mullet, a black mullet. Like, <laughs> a pickup truck. Diverse. Everybody had a different color mullet. <laughs> but Sam wasn't the right color Sam, hair. Sam did not have a mullet either. Right. He was. That's why he was outcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had a proper haircut. <laughs> <laughs> it may have been a helmet. I mean, it was oh, really... maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe it is a helmet because he's cannonball and he's like, "This is my hair." <laughs> there you go. That's our head cannon. He has a wig for a helmet. Yeah. <laughs> lots and lots of hairspray basically turned it into a helmet. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> no. That works. But yeah, this guy in the general store also mentions, yeah, the mutants are giving off radiation and it killed twenty cows in the town that was over there. And instantly, this dude is like, yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> Out yep. of all the things that could oh. be logical, you right. know, mutant radiation. Again, this is a thousand percent <laughs> work. I remember like once, I forget what it was. It was something like someone got sick or something, something you know, bad but normal happened in town, and one of the people at the church I grew up in said like, well, you know, I'm not going to say that. Let's say Steve or whatever, <laughs> the town pastor, like Steve walked by the bar the other day. That was literally the explanation of the story was he walked past the bar instead of taking the long way around the block to avoid walking in front of it, not go in, like walk past it. And they're like, oh yeah, that explains why Susie's sick. And as a kid, I was like, I guess, I guess I have something to figure out again when I get older. And I got older. I'm like, what were they talking about? You're like, no. <laughs> I love the small town platitudes in, in, in stories that you add to the show, Rod. I mean, I'm from a small town too, but like, yeah. we didn't get down like that. Yeah, I was, I was from an Italian town, very different vibe. Ooh, ooh. We just argue with people about pizza. No, no mafia. <laughs> no mafia involvement at all. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. okay. Um, pizza. pizza. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Air quotes. Yeah. People, people disappearing after getting their pizza. So jump over to Dan's diner. And like I said, this one kid comes up and is like looking for Kenny Jenkins, which I couldn't find anything about that name either. Okay. So I'm not completely crazy. I wrote all these. No, they were, they were giving point. very specific full names. And I was like looking them up. I'm like, nope. Were these like Patreon supporters? Of they the had to be. <laughs> Maybe these were shout outs like to the people who were crowdfunding these last few episodes. Yeah. They're like, we'll give you $50 for the rogue scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> or like the C team was like, you know what? We're not getting paid for this, so let's like immortalize our names forever yeah. in these last yeah. few episodes. <laughs> it's like the guy who put his wife's birthday in Halo Three. What? You ever hear about that? No. Yeah. How in Halo sweet. 3, only on a certain date, if you let the loading screen sit for a certain amount of time, it in very small letters, it says happy birthday to this guy's wife. Oh, oh interesting. But that it's so such sweet. a super specific thing that it, it could have never have been caught except a random person is like, wait, why does it say that? And it was actually that, so. I would love that. I love Halo, by the way. I only know we'll Halo. Have, we'll have to add each other on Xbox later. Yes. I only know Halo through the TV show. Which I'm sorry. Which incredibly disappointing to John. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, well, we need to get you into comics and Halo. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is, if, if we have another lockdown or I win the lottery and I had the to- all the time in the world, I would love to get into all this. <laughs> yes. This kid goes and tells Kenny that Sally's been, what was the phrasing on it? It was like private stock. I would, the specific wording. I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about his girlfriend as private stock. It's like, oh. Like, I know he's supposed to play a creep, but it just felt gross even hearing it said out loud. He deserves what's coming soon. Jump over to the Guthrie house and Rogue shows up, introduces herself as Miss LeBeau. I had an exclamation on that too. I was I was a little shocked by, by that one. Well, I think she didn't want to introduce herself as Rogue from the X-Men. Maybe she's famous. Yeah. So she like, and she stopped herself. She's like, I'm, I'm Miss LeBeau. Yeah. <laughs> a little Freudian slip. Yeah. So I think she just kind of like fumbled and had to go with it. And then of course there's a spot in my notes that I can't read what it says after. The next thing I had is Rogue and Sam go for a walk and Sam talks to Rogue about how I had Gurkland here. Gurkland? <laughs> has like a mutant type of peace corps right this is where we learned that he was unclear about what this is and he's been putting so much pressure on sam to join us i was like wait so he hasn't even told you exactly what you're signing up for sounds dangerous like the dude looks military so if you're going to go into some like armed forces thing you should know very specific details you should know what's going on (laughs) but he is 16 so he's probably an idiot (laughs) Yeah, well, I mean, he didn't join up, so he's he's a little smart. As they finish up their conversation, you pan over, and there's, like, some guys in suits, like, taking pictures of them and, like, stalking them on their walk. That's true. <laughs> no one notices. No, but I, but I did think it was interesting because of the whole Southern hospitality and stuff like that. He specifies to Rogue that he likes helping people. And that he believes that God gave him his powers, which kind of harkens back to the conversations we had about Nightcrawler, too, where it's not seeing it as science or random mutation or, you know, anything like that. But it was like, no, he was he was given these for a purpose, which is the opposite of how a lot of the mutants end up feeling. They, they feel like it's the curse, whereas Sam actually views it as a blessing. Well, to or be fair, too, I mean, Sam's power didn't disfigure him or make him. I mean, yeah. Nightcrawler, yes, he's blue, pointy ears, tail. <laughs> right. Looks like Satan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, with Sam, like, he's also hashtag blessed. Yeah, he, he is one of the passable, can live in everyday yeah. life, and it's only when he decides to break out the power. But, yeah, he doesn't want to leave home. Rogue heads over to the diner and kind of gives the report to, to Hank of, of what's going on. And Hank can't really find anything about this government program. And it was like, well, you also didn't know about X Factor in the previous episodes, too. So your research in 1997, not that great. Let's be honest. Yeah. Well, in The Power of X-Men, we always ask the question, where did he get his degree? Is it Xavier's University? <laughs> yeah, I mean. He was learning from Wolverine and Cyclops, <laughs> so they're just constantly arguing. I've never actually thought about that <laughs> question because he is a doctor. But where did uh, he study? Yeah, doctor of what? Uh, eye surgery, according to the show. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, I forgot about that. He does operate on Carly's eyes, so at least... Yeah. He, so he's, he's an just, optometrist. If he's an optometrist and that's all his doctorate is, <laughs> compared to all the shit that he does, you just broke the show for me, Michelle. <laughs> Or, do, yeah, does everybody just trust him? He just said it. Yeah, he's yeah, like, I'm like, a doctor. He, I have a PhD in optometry. He's a PhD, like, in <laughs> yeah, poetry or history or something. <laughs> right. Like, so we, we know or... where Professor X got his because of the One Man's Worth episodes. Mm-hmm. Well, now I'm just going to have, a, like, an existential crisis after this. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he liked hanging out with the Shi'ar so much. He's like, I can learn things. Yeah. I got my degree in space. So we see some of these government spooks talking to each other, and they say that they can't find a Miss LeBeau, but their facial scans, which props to them for having, what is it, Google Eye? Is that the specific software? If it was, it'd probably change names. Yeah, now. that's true. But <laughs> it's probably 30 Skype. years ago. And then they mentioned that the wide awake data 
is what told them that this was Rogue from the X-Men. I don't know if it's in the episodes because we are recording a few of these out of order so we can line up with Michelle's schedule, but I don't remember ever hearing Project Wide Awake ever in this series. Okay. Sorry, and there's only that, like... That wasn't just me. <laughs> we're only missing four episodes in between, and one of them is Jubilee's Fairy Tales, which I know does not have... <laughs> anything about project wide awake i will put money on that one i would love for that to be that one or one of julie's fairy tales is like and now children the tale of wide awake i I will i will break a tv if that pops up during that episode what if it it's just like the whole fairy tale is like wide awake like it's a code (laughs) for some like crazy project rod could vouch i have a tv that's like on its last leg right now so if (laughs) if i'm watching on that tv this this notebook going right through it (laughs) just make sure you record it so yeah oh of course (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah e- everything bad that happens in my life make sure to record it thanks Rob. <laughs> yep. there's a scene where beast is basically like trying to hack through a bunch of information and gambit and professor x arrive b says a phone number goes to something that doesn't exist it's essentially an empty building but uses three times the standard amount of power that a building of this size would use and it's in richmond virginia it was like just tons of information just being dumped right there. Yeah. It, but <laughs> I, was, I love that the information is like so spotty where like he didn't know about the program or whatever and stuff. Then he could like look up records of power grid usage. Is that public information? He <laughs> must know. have like a really strong like Google search. <laughs> you know, that was Ask Jeeves back in the day. Yeah. Oh, Ask Jeeves. Google had not taken supremacy of search engines. So that That's was like true. maybe, maybe late web crawler. Ooh, I forgot Only about web, web crawler. crawler. <laughs> about that too oh my God. or aol keyword <laughs> if he was if he was hacking with big air quotes using aol keywords that would have been the most amazing thing ever i just remember like it's like oh there's this great piece of jim lee artwork let's click download and you come back five minutes later and it was only like 60 percent of the way downloaded yeah, yeah. And, and a virus not if you did it from <laughs> aol if you did okay. it from aol official sites you were safe yeah okay but everything AOL else was, was a little absolutely- bit better about bot checking their stuff yeah. It was like uh, Netscape. You had to check you had everything. like the Netscape users and then you had the AOL users. <laughs> you know. She's not wrong. It's kind of like <laughs> iPhone and Android. That should be a whole podcast in itself. The, what browser did you use in ninety seven? There's gotta be a tech nostalgia podcast. Yeah. I'm sure there is. If they're listening, they could have us on and we could just talk about all the technology that does not make sense in this show anymore. I would love to have that conversation. Like the entire database of all mutants in the government is on one hard drive. Wait, is it like a ba- like a room of hard drives? No, no, it was literally one tower. What the heck? What? Yeah, yeah, like in the first episode, Beast is on one single, it was like a desktop computer and he's like, it's like, like, this has gotta, everything. I, yeah, he's like, I have to just delete all this stuff. And Storm's like, we don't have time for this shit. So it's like, blows it up. <laughs> yeah, she zaps it, and it's like, cool, we're safe for at least six yeah, months Yeah, there now. we go. We got it. There's no internet here. <laughs> right. The dial-up is gone. Maybe he oh. had it all, like, on a zip drive, you know? You guys remember zip drives? I think yes. this was even pre-zip drive. Oh, shoot. Maybe yeah, it was a man. floppy. Not an actual floppy, but like the... The 3.5 yeah. floppy? Yeah. <laughs> so Gambit heads over to this building, does the worst security break-in I've ever seen, because he waits until he's right in front of the security camera, and that's when he zaps it with his power to break it. I don't think Gambit understands the concept of a live feed of a security camera. <laughs> also, this moment, it was one of the few times where the animation actually, for a second, made me question, like, the. I, I thought it was a plot point because the door became enormous. I was like, oh, this building is alive. It's like a produce thing or something. (laughs) Nope. Because the door became twice as tall as he did when he walked through it. And I was like, oh man, it's just, oh no, no, that was just a lazy animator. (laughs) Not to to date this podcast of when we're recording, but in a week is WonderCon. And I'm going to see at WonderCon if there's one of the booths that has animation cells. I'm going to try (laughs) to get one from this episode just because of how bad it's got to be compared to any of the other episodes. It's just like on a napkin. <laughs> it's, not, it's not even actually a clear cell. It's just straight up drawn on a napkin. <laughs> so Gambit also busts his way through some vents, which those are really big vents if a person the size of Gambit in his armor is able to get through it. And he pops out and he just is immediately surrounded by goons. And then we cut to break. Because he's so great at breaking into places. <laughs> he's a master thief. He goes to the point of actually emphasizing that he was a master thief. He was the head of the, the Thieves Guild. Maybe. Maybe he should have joined the Assassin's Guild. <laughs> I think they just forgot about his backstory and they're like, yeah, he can get caught. It's fine. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> he gets, he gets caught on camera, then blows up the camera 
And then he pops out this vent and is immediately surrounded by people. You know, he's he looks good at least, right? Yeah, it's because you guys have the chiseled abs on the armor. Oh, that's oh yeah. That is, that is always my favorite, especially you know, Michelle, you're a cosplayer, so there's the ones where it's like a skin tight outfit, and then there are the ones where it's like the plastic in the shape of abs on the top of the outfit, and I'm just like. Which one is the animated version of Gambit? Is he actual abs or is or is he pressed on abs, essentially? Press on abs. I mean, or it could just be abs. like cell shaded too, because like with those the Zentai suits, the shadows are all there, you mm-hmm. know, like to give you like bigger boobs or like a bigger booty or something. Like maybe he, they just have like the, the shaded abs. It's like a hybrid. It's not the armor. It's not the actual. It's just shaded. It's like when there's the Spider-Man with the cell shading on top of the webbing. Yeah. 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 Or I... Any props to any of the Spider-Men who do the black suit because everything is showing in that thing. There's no even like hidden shadows. It's like, nope, you're just showing the world what your body is right now. Go for it. Yeah, work it. So come back. Gambit is strapped to a chair. It looks a lot like Professor X's chair too. Yeah. Like very similar shape to it. And one of these government guys is like, well, you know, we're going to make you a part of the team. And then they reveal to him that there is somebody in a Weapon X style chamber. It looked like a Cyclops style. It did. Like, it looked like Cyclops. Yeah. Exactly my note. Like, did they get Cyclops? Yeah. Finally. finally. You just didn't his want pa- him to make it to the end of the series, did you, his Ryan? power is yelling. <laughs> maybe it's one of his brothers. Maybe it's Adam X or maybe it's Vulcan. Who knows? Do you know who either of those are, Rod? Nope. God oh. damn it. <laughs> oh, wow. I look, you, bo- you both side eye in, in sync. <laughs> this should have been the video one. <laughs> it really should have been the video one. Thinking of it in hindsight, this should have been the video episode. Oh. Uh, yeah, sorry. There was the leave that pause, and that was just me like absorbing <laughs> how little Rod knows about the X Men outside of the TV show. Well, you, yeah, I know it, Marvel stuff from three things. Well, I guess four things: video game, toys, animated series, and MCU. Oh, well, we don't always refer to the MCU as accurate, the most accurate. Yeah, well, I'm not even saying accurate. Just okay. like the things I know. even even just like frame of reference. Yeah, yeah. people mm-hmm. will talk to me about it, and I'm just like, that's not how any of this works. Right. Like, you could you could say it in context of the MCU, but you don't yeah. know the character that's been around for. I mean, X Men are hitting their 60th anniversary. It's like there's 60 years of history. Don't tell me just because they dropped the M word in this show that this is how all mutants work now. Except when they then go and copycat it into the comics, but. That's that's a current <laughs> problem. So Sam and Paige are at the diner, and the bully from earlier, whose name was already not that important, comes to confront him. Sam, of course, is clueless because he's like, well, I don't know who your girlfriend is. I'm not hooking up with her, basically. <laughs> then it was like the lamest intimidation I think I've ever seen. One of the kids that's with him is like, dude, he saved your dad. Why are you being a dick to him? But then they just kind of kick dirt at him. And I was like, oh, that- yeah. It's like, if this guy's got a mutant power, is kicking dirt really the thing you're going to do to try to intimidate him right now? I think it was more because they couldn't show violence on the show. Yes. Oh, that reminds me. There is a thing that I was going to read and I closed the window on it. So I will bring that up at one point during the the closing notes of the episode. That's how we'll do it. But then Let's chalk that up to public education in a small town. Yeah. They, he, th- he thinks that's how you disable mutant power. <laughs> Dirt. But then the dude like throws in that last jab at the end. He's like, I hate your kind. And then they start to drive off. I don't know what they thought they were going to do with driving off with the dude who literally turns into a human rocket. And the- he gets behind the truck and starts pushing it. And he's pushing them to the point where it's going 120 miles an hour. And I don't see a truck like that being able to survive going 120 miles an hour. I figured like, oh, he's- they're done. The bully starts screaming and apologizing. And then it's the longest animation of the car looking like it's going to flip, but finally at the last second does not flip. I think I did not watch that part. (laughs) There's just a lot of screeching noises. Yeah. (laughs) Sam gets back to the diner and then gets to his sister. And then the other dude makes a like last second comment. He's like, I looked out for her. That guy really wanted Sam to know that he was not one of the bullies. (laughs) He's He's like, like, "I I protected your sister, dog. Yeah. I am not the bigot like those other rednecks are right now. So <laughs> then the, probably the funniest moment of the entire episode happens for me. You cut back to Gambit. He's in the lab, strapped down to the table, and they have this little piece that they're going to put onto his head. And then they just put the like most awkward placement 
were shaving a part of your head just whole in his hair. <laughs> and I was like, for somebody like Gambit, that is the greatest insult you could do is to give him shitty hair. Yeah, I was like, I was like, no, I, I was physically flinching. because like, he's got gray hair. I mean, he's poorly animated, but he's got gray hair. <laughs> Just gonna shave. Gonna take. I, I thought they were gonna interrupt it. Like someone was gonna save him before they did that. No, nope. they just went. They had the the dot, and it was dead center on the top of his head. Also, great razor because that was just like a single blade. I know that just went through like you know a few inches of hair. Like, <laughs> All of a sudden, everybody goes to sleep. So, oh yeah, that's when Professor X comes in, huh? Yeah. So Professor X and Beasts came in. They give the very overloaded explanation of it. And Gambit's like, I have no idea what you're talking. He's like, he's like, he's, he's like you care. made them go to sleep. Like, this is not that hard to figure out right now. Yeah, I took it as like Xavier just like overly trying to justify, you know, kind of putting everybody into a coma. <laughs> but it's a small coma. <laughs> it's a baby. They'll all wake up. I promise. Yeah. It's kind of like several episodes ago where Beast kind of inadvertently killed a street full of people by gassing them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well. So in this episode, he decides to tranquilize Sabretooth, who's attacking a crowd. So he's like, this will tranquilize him. He's like, a gas that would tranquilize saber tooth wouldn't that just murder normal? Yeah, no people with <laughs> especially if you got somebody with asthma, they're done. They're well, screwed. that's why he doesn't have a real degree because if he did, he would know this. <laughs> with his poetry degree, yes, oh. that's what we're gonna say now. Oh, his okay. Yeah, yeah, his <laughs> okay. his doctorate in fine literature, in liberal arts. No offense to anybody who majored in no, liberal arts. but they're but they are not. Uh, <laughs> They're also not X-Men, so are you, Rod? But, he but, might be, you know of. maybe. <laughs> but he also points out, he's like, I find it rather distasteful. Like, they still had to make sure it was clear that, like, this is the goody two-shoes version of Professor X, as opposed to what Michelle and I know is the modern version of Professor X, who does not give a fuck. Modern version of Professor X is like- He's so I'm, creepy, too. I'm just like, oh my yeah. god, in that, like, tight suit and that helmet, like, dancing around like my X-Men. <laughs> you're spot on. Like, yeah, you're- that's, <laughs> and this is even before the current, like, again, to date the episode, we're going through the Sins of Sinister crossover right now. Even before that, when he's just regular Chuck, not doing anything out of character, possessed by anybody, he's still creepy as shit. Yeah. It's like they should have just let him stay dead, but they didn't. I know. I know. Let Emma run everything. She's good at it. Just like the movies, right? They kept killing Xavier and then he just kept coming back. I mean, it's just comic books. Is You can't stay dead for too long. Yeah. yeah. Unless you're Jean Grey. They'll kill you for like, I don't know, was it 15 years? She was gone for like... She was gone yeah, for a, really? a long time. Grant Morrison well. run until X-Men Red was when so she came back. It was like, what, early 2000s? Yeah. To now. That's a long time to stay dead. Right, because it was... <laughs> I started reading again in 2005, 2006 when it was Astonishing. And yeah, she was she already was still dead. dead before, yeah, she still was dead, dead before Astonishing. Yeah. Hello. Oh, yeah. It was Phoenix End Song is when she came back, I want to say. She came back, like, very brief. Yeah. She but, yeah, did, but she still, didn't. Yeah. There was still a decade of, of no real gene yeah. for us. So. I felt like End Song was a tease. And I'm all, yeah. so rude. But then they gave her back, or gave her back to us. Finally. So, so jumps over. There's an investigator at the mine and he just shines this like random yellow light that has no effect on the beam that he's touching. It was like going into like a hotel room with a blue light and it actually looking clean. But he then says, oh yeah, there's an obscene amount of like nuclear levels on it. And then all of a sudden everybody just like starts instantly turning on poor Sam. This is like that Beauty and the Beast moment where the town folk want to go kill the beast just because he's the beast <laughs> yeah with no catchy number to go along. yeah there was no. no song here we we had no <laughs> we had no budget for music <laughs> <laughs> the, okay so you'll appreciate this our buddy ron was the one who composed the original theme song of course he did not know about the remake theme song from the final episodes yeah i was i was at a bar with ron and i was like who did this song he's like i don't know where this came from <laughs> yeah it was like a weird remix yeah if yeah, you so, will. I know. I was watching it. I'm like, what is this? Even my husband was like, what? It doesn't it go thing. as hard. So obviously, if we don't even have the original theme song, we were not getting a musical number here. So Sam gets back and he decides he needs to call Gerklin and they send a chopper for him, which I just think is funny that you're sending a chopper to pick up the guy who could literally fly to you quicker <laughs> than the chopper is going to get to him. They need to remain power. Of course. The X-Men arrive. And then Rogue with her bare hands touches Gambit's face. That was a triple exclamation. I, li I literally rewound it three times. And I'm like, wait, did she? And I was like, 
Yeah. And then I was like, is this an animation error? Like, was it like, did the black thing on the side of Gambit's face move? And I'm like, no, she literally, with her bare hands, touched that part of his face. And it was intentional because when they zoom out, she's in short sleeves. Yep. And you know, she doesn't have like, you know, outlines for gloves or anything. And then Beast and Xavier also show up. And then I just have a note that says racist miners because they show up at the house. The dad essentially starts to to talk them down. But then the dad actually is like a dick. Because yeah. he's like, he's like, yeah, if you have a problem with mutants, go look at them. You were cool for almost this entire episode, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like, why did he you really, have to mess this up? He really like deflection. Yeah. But yeah. Basically, the miners are all saying the boy has brought nothing but trouble. And he's like, no, but they did. They're very impressionable. This stuff. I also had in here that it's still, once again, torches and pitchfork right. yeah. stuff even though yeah i mean i know it's a small town but electricity does exist <laughs> there is one line where it's just kind of like the angry grumbling of the mob and the guy yells they killed my mayor and it literally sounded like the same way in <laughs> south park where it's they took our job <laughs> it's the same inflection and everything it was so spot oh on God. it was perfect <laughs> Once again, extraneous syllables, right? Yeah, exactly. Of course, the X-Men don't want to fight a bunch of angry hillbillies, <laughs> so they just start like slowly backing away. They're like, bye, peace. Sam is in the helicopter with the army guys, and they then proceed to call the X-Men criminals. And the second that Sam sees this, which also I love the fact that he knew who the X-Men were. He knew who Charles Xavier was. He knew that Hank McCoy had been with the president. But Rogue felt the need to not say that she was Rogue to him. Maybe he did know. Out. Oh, yeah. It's the blowout. It was the blowout. <laughs> yeah. That's that's an excellent point. Yes. Especially this is like the definitely in that area of the country pre-internet. So it's not like yeah. he was seeing updated pictures of Rogue yeah, on a regular basis. Yeah, he's like, basis. she don't have a perm. Right. <laughs> like, the same Rogue. And, and they, they didn't just call the X-Men criminals. I think they straight up said terrorists. Yeah, I think they did use the word terrorists. The government guys said criminals, and then Sam reacted with, oh. they're not terrorists. So, th- yeah, implied, absolutely, but... Mm-hmm. Or it's a Freudian slip from Sam's part. <laughs> <laughs> he actually considers them terrorists. <laughs> oh my gosh. So... Sam flies out as they try to gas him, which they, they needed a better plan than that. Like, th- I mean, this ga- is like one of the worst, not- like the worst clandestine group of government agents. <laughs> they just have no idea what they're doing. So Sam flies out and they send the shock troops after them. Rod, did you recognize the shock troops? No, okay. I just I just said droids. <laughs> well, they were they were not well known characters. I just. OK, OK, so. This is a favorite game is asking Rod if he recognizes something because he mostly knows from the toys. Oh, yes. like the original Toy Biz toys, not the awesome collection you have. Oh, I mean, I have some Toy Biz, too. But he only knows about the Toy Biz. Oh. Yeah. And like the first like two or three generations. You, so you didn't get like the what, like the fifth wave where you got all the weird characters like he Gideon. knew who Tusk was. Oh, right. Yeah, but that, oh. that was that was still in an early like. It's still like 90s wave of toy biz stuff. Yeah. Okay. I mean, shout out. I only, I only knew Tusk from that action figure, though, because me and my brother wanted the guy whose back opened up and had another figure inside of it. Yeah. Shout out to our buddy on Instagram, Action Figure Checklist, because he has put out like all the original toy biz line. It like shows what wave everybody was in and stuff like that. So that is a great account. I need I to follow Star them. It, and it's all of them. It's like Darkwing Duck and like, everything. Yep. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, it, okay. It, it, it's really dangerous when you're drunk and scrolling through Instagram <laughs> because then you start saying, I wonder if that's on eBay. And <gasps> yes, we've all drunk eBay bought stuff. Oh yeah. I, I, I the have the, the little mini comic that's like Mighty Max style. Look at it. Oh, oh my yeah. god. Rod Rod with I, the, and I don't co- I don't collect. Yeah. <laughs> Is so, that uh, sub zero or smoke? Oh smoke. Okay. So we have the G.I. Joe smoke and then the black suit storm <gasps> holding suit a lightning storm. bolt and does her, does her battery still work, Rod? Oh no, I'm pretty sure there's battery acid inside of the lightning bolt corrosion. She might work for like a second. Because my Dark no, no, Phoenix I, I, works I, for like a second. I, I think that it is fully, there's like battery oh. acid inside. I can oh, see. Oh, like she's, she's leaking. She's uh-huh. leaking. Okay. <laughs> Storm is leaking. That's why, and that's why I put it right next to my computer where it's safe. <laughs> <laughs> not the computer that the battery blew up though, right? Yeah. No, yeah. that's in the other room. <laughs> Just not good with batteries. So Sam flies back, tells the X-Men that they actually need to leave because they're going to be in danger. And then all the shock troops arrive. And then my 
standard note is big robot fight. Yeah, it's a big action scene. X-Men defeat droids. <laughs> So they, they being the government, says, oh, we have to send in Unit 1. And this is the reference that only I would get. It reminded me of Evangelion because the main robot in Evangelion is Unit 1. And I feel like the main government character has said that exact phrase at one point. It's super generic, but it was like I had flashbacks to watching Evangelion. And if you haven't watched Evangelion before, the show is totally trauma-inducing, which is why flashback is actually appropriate for talking about that show. Was this the one you showed me the song from? Like one of the later yes. episodes of the finale? Yeah, from the finale uh, yeah, that yeah, I was yeah. like, oh yeah, I yeah, hear yeah. the song and it literally breaks me because it's yeah, it's the much. entire world dying. Spoiler for a 30-year-old anime. That has lived through the last four years. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. I had to know here, was this a important character? Because at first I thought they just randomly dropped Abomination into the show. Yeah, I could find... But he didn't have the ears. I literally couldn't find anything about this mutant. And the only theory I had is this was Mimic. That was the only theory I had, and that's even a stretch. It was essentially kind of what we had in recent comics with... Michelle, have you read Department H? I have not. You know, Lucy wants to play. Oh. Yeah, tell tell your cat this is not a piano episode. Oh. <laughs> Okay, just a second. Okay, we're almost like I heard you needed uh, some music. <laughs> so there is a program where they're basically infusing aspects of the Hulk and aspects of Wolverine, and I think they end up making that character like one of the Savage Avengers or something like that. Oh it was, yes, yes, yes. It wasn't. Yes. It wasn't very good. So was it yeah. Weapon H? Was that it? Weapon H. That okay, was okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I do yes, remember sorry, that. not Department H, Weapon H, but yeah, that was like, I was like, is this like an early version? And this was the most waste of a weapon I've ever seen. They literally drop him. He misses shooting Professor X, which everybody has been able to shoot Professor X lately, and this right. guy still messes up. And then he just reverts back into, you know. He just passes out. Yeah. Okay, I love how so far this episode, and probably this whole episode, I didn't know the one main thing. But then I took notes on everything else, and they end up being nobody. So the Guthrie family <laughs> is the one thing that did not stand out to you. But everything else, you're getting like fine detail. Like yeah, I was yeah. like, I was like, who's Kenny and who's Shelley? <laughs> yep, <laughs> nobody. They're all literally nobodies. So as they're retreating, Sam decides he's going to chase down the train. Just completely knocks this thing off the tracks. And then we do get one of the references, which I did hope you picked up on. Rod is Kirkland says Hodge was right about the X Men. Yes. Okay. One. Yeah. That one. I was like, oh, the general reveals that Hodge is the one that sent them after <gasps> Cameron yeah. Hodge, right? Which, yeah, and in our recording order, our most recent recording session was the Phalanx yeah. episodes where Hodge was in there. So, yeah, he's an integral part of Generation X as well. Oh my gosh, the whole like Phalanx, right? If I do know him, but from the show. Oh. So we're, we've been talking about if we have a break of stuff between when this ends, which is, you know, now in a few weeks for us, to whenever the, the new series premieres, which is fall, vaguely, we're going to have to watch other stuff and fill in. I would love it if you could be on the Generation X episode with us, because everybody it. has talked about different things. Certain people have referenced certain movies. A few people have referenced Pride of the X-Men. A few people have talked about, like, you know, the, the Wolverine and the X-Men cartoon. You're the first one who's, like, all in on Generation X. So. That's my jam. Yeah. I would love to rewatch. Is that the movie that you were talking about, the made for TV movie? And then there's okay, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah, books too. There's books too. I would love to. I would love to rewatch that because, like you said, I have really fond memories of it, but also really very much aware of the quality of TV CG at the time. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So after they mention Haas, they basically say the elimination of the X Men is the top priority which I find really funny, again, knowing that this was either the third to last or second to last episode. <laughs> So like, we're going to get those X-Men. And then we never do. They got them by canceling the show. <laughs> <laughs> that was a plan. It was just a hiatus, okay? Yeah, it was a Cameron's really like, long hiatus. Yeah, they needed to Cameron's get their, like, their shit together. Cameron's like, let's make this story so bad that the network won't renew it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so basically, the Guthries are like, well, we got to get out of town because now shit is really, really awkward for all of us. Of course, they offer him a spot at the school. He says, no, I'm going to stay with my family, which tends to happen when they keep offering new people spots at the school. Yeah, like, they've like, done it to like, Yeah, they've done it to like six or seven people and nobody takes them up on their offer except Jubilee. Jubilee is the only one who's like, yes, I will stay here. She's like, yeah, I could use some, you know, help with my powers. Yeah. But then... He does actually say, thank you, Miss LeBeau. That was funny. So maybe Sam was just like, 
you know, maybe it's just the fact that he only knew her as Rogue and there's no Wikipedia to reference, like, what's her That's real true. name? So he could actually just think that is her last name. That's true. You know, he's a sweet, he's a sweet boy and just maybe... You know, he is a blonde after all. Yes. <laughs> Despite his, his animation hair color, he yes. is a blonde. Mm -hmm. And he's a 16-year-old so blonde. His wig helmet. Oh, yeah. Maybe he's yeah. a blonde underneath the wig helmet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that wraps up our episode. Like I said, second to last episode airing, even though it was third to last in the script order. What I thought was funny is, even though this is the first time that this character is talking... He's only ever called Sam. He never has a code name. So we all know him as Cannonball, but he's never actually called Cannonball. Well, you guys did. <laughs> Maybe yeah. they didn't have like the rights or something. They're like, listen, we cannot call this guy Cannonball. He's just Sam. I, I that, that would be interesting because I was yeah. telling John about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., how they like low-key had MODOK in mm -hmm. it. But then they found out after airing the episode, like, you can't have MODOK, we're going to do something with him. Like, oh, just kidding. It was another headless, like, disembodied head controlling robot. <laughs> and I just completely forgot that that episode happened, even though that was in the seasons that I was watching. All right. And I do have, because somebody did mention it, notes about the edits of the episode, the standards board had them change a few things. One of the writers, Stephen Metchl Melching, sorry, Stephen, if I'm saying it wrong, writer Stephen Melching said that standards and practices made them change. Please keep the flames well away from Sam and Pa. Please check with your legal regarding the many references to Mutant Peace Corps. And they did say Mutant Peace Corps with P and C, both capital, but not the M. Please have Gambit use his powers, parentheses, not tools, to short the sensor and open the hatch lock or keep all of his actions off camera so they are not instructed. Please do not have the captive mutant cry out. Do not have the truck come close to hitting Paige and Sam. Please delete or substitute for Kenny's dang mutie. Please delete or substitute Gambit's tell you where you can put that, which I guess was a original phrase that they had for Gambit. Please do not show a cigarette butt igniting the gasoline. Please do not show anyone in the mob carrying a gun. Please do not show glass breaking after the sonic boom. The shock troopers should clearly be robots, not people in flying armor. Please have Unit 1 just freeze in place or some such, not fall to the ground and grab his head as if he's in pain. Also, please eliminate Sam blasting another trooper and Rogue hurling a trooper towards Gambit and delete the action of Sam blowing up the train, which plays as excess for BSNP. Which is really interesting to me that this is the episode that had that because I couldn't find that about any other one. Maybe that's why it was so chaotic or just like <laughs> WTF, what is happening? Really the only closing note I have is Eric Leifold is like, yeah, I kind of have little to say about this episode and no defense. Like he literally wrote that <laughs> in the book. And I don't so think I it's think the worst episode. It's not It's not great from an animation perspective, but I thought it was a fine episode. If it had the animation we're used to, it would have been, besides not being quite about the X-Men themselves, it would have been a pretty standard episode. I think it was a decent story. Yeah. And I, I think he, he even says that. He goes, there's no personal story, which... You know, we've talked about with him. That's that's why Eric doesn't tend to like the Mojo episodes because there's no personal story about one of the X Men that that happens in those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though for some reason the Mojo episodes like our second highest TikTok of of the entire <laughs> series that we've done. People love his face. <laughs> it's such a bad thumbnail. But yeah, that is everything. Closing thoughts from the crew. What do you think? Well, I like that we had the Guthries. I mean, I would have liked to see more of them. I like that I met the Guthries. <laughs> <laughs> So the good part about the Guthries is we now have the door open for them to be in X-Men 97. Yeah. We can get some new mutants. Yeah. We can get some Generation X. We can even get some Academy X kids. Like, let's do it. Wow, you dropped Academy in there. I know. I know. But what color hair will Sam have when he, he's he, blonde? He's blonde. He but better be blonde. Icarus has red hair, though, so that tracks. I have to look up Icarus. <laughs> For some reason, I'm blanking on the off the top of my head what he looked like. He was in the Academy years, right? Yeah, he was in. Yeah. He was with the Academy X kids. He had the the red wings. He had the girlfriend that died. That doesn't narrow it down, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> the superhero with the dead significant other. Yeah. <laughs> he also had a guitar and like sang a lot. As soon as I see it, I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, that guy. But yeah, well. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure to have you on. Yeah. And now we know we're going to have you back whenever we do this Generation X episode. So. Yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> Rod, 
your closing thoughts before your cat starts playing piano? Yeah, I guess it's dinner time for her. No, I, I actually kind of like the story once I wasn't looking at the screen. <laughs> and now that I know who Sam is, cool. Yeah, that, that, that he got he actually got some screen time that wasn't like a monitor on the side of an episode or something. Yeah, even though that was actually the accurate depiction of his 90s costume in that. Yeah, and it's, I guess... For what I prepped myself for the last part of the last season, how bad it's going to be. This wasn't as bad as I expected. One last shout out. Michelle, please tell people where to find you because you've been awesome. And we want to make sure that if they found out about you because of us, that they could find you on social and podcasts and such. Oh, well, I'm Michelle Waffalo on Instagram and Twitter. I have a joint account with my husband called Adventures in Geekdom, where we chronicle our comic book hunting and action figure collecting adventures. And I will also be in person at WonderCon next weekend. Which that will be in the past when we record oh, this, unfortunately. Okay. Um, but so I sad. will make sure that we post something from <laughs> WonderCon. Yes. Because I'll, I'll be there. I don't yes. know if Rod's going to come, but I'll be there. Oh, Rod, you should come. You have to come to day. Anaheim, though, Rod. Oh, yeah, I probably will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to build up my convention stamina oh, for later in the fair. summer. That's fair. That's fair. Maybe in San Diego again. We can do San Diego. Oh, yeah, good. the mecca. We'll just, get, we'll just get you drunk and in the parties. You don't even have to hit the show floor. Yeah, you'll be okay. Oh, that'd be beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, the show floor is mainly the problem. Oh, <laughs> it's a mess. It's a mess. No. Like, it makes me tired just thinking about it. I think this will be my 14th San Diego this year. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Been to a lot of them. Well, thank you guys for joining us. If you have any thoughts, make sure to drop them into the comments for either the YouTube upload or the official Instagram post about this episode. And if you like what you heard, we'd appreciate a rating on the podcast app of your choosing. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, iHeartMedia, Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and CastBox. Rod, give us a damn good sign off. We hope to see you soon, Sam, in 97. I- <laughs> so good. See ya, Hayseed. Hey,